Finishing Walnut Stocks on Muzzleloading Rifles William Hovey Smith, 2014 I'm the author of Extreme Muzzleloading, and here we're doing the final stock finishing on a Brunswick rifle. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. And today we're going to start the refinishing process on a walnut stock for a muzzleloading rifle. The stock we're working on is the stock for a Brunswick rifle, which was the first large-scale percussion rifled arm in the British military. Now you'll notice that I have a filler here of plastic. This is because this gun has a rather large patch box, which I won't receive actually for perhaps a month or more. But I'm going to go ahead and refinish the stock. And the reason this plate is put in here, which is just a piece of cut plastic, is to protect the mortises here. For when I sand the rest of this, I don't dull and roll those edges. Now, finishing stock woods is a pleasurable undertaking for most people. It is something that it's sort of sensuous, really. Uh, you take something that's dull and rough and you sand on it a little bit with fine sandpaper. And I started this one with 200 grit sandpaper, by the way. And then you proceed with finer and finer grades and you bring out more and more of the wood and more color in the wood, particularly in the case of water. And then you stain it and sand it again to get the grain down. And then you start putting on oil finish and the more you rub, uh, the deeper the finish gets and the more permanent the finish becomes. So we're going to get started. Now I'm going to be using this Birchwood Casey kit just purely because it happens to be available to most people. And in it you see a wood stain which we'll start with to actually stain this walnut a darker color, then an oil finish, and then a top coat finish, which will give it its final sheen. So we will be applying these, and I'll show you how it works as we go along. I have the stock sitting in an oil mortar tub, and the first thing you want to do is to take a clean rag that you sure does not have any grease or oil and just wipe down the stock and this removes any remaining wood dust. You get that out of the way. Okay. It's also much easier to work stain if you use a larger container yeah, don't try to dip it out of here. Uh, you'll probably wind up spilling your bottle if you do. And we're using this full strength because I want to have a dark finish on the stock. And I've spotted a little piece of wood here, and you can see how dark the stain is going to be. So this is going to be a pretty dark stain. Now, if you wanted a lighter stain, yeah, uh, you just mix more water with it and then you lighten up the stain. So now we start just putting it on. We have now completed our staining and the objective here was to get a uniform coating over the entire gun and now yeah we've about done that I think so we'll just let this rest through the night and then tomorrow we'll do sanding to remove this grain that's been raised and start our first coatings of oil but you want to make sure this is thoroughly dry before you go through the next step. We have now let our stock dry overnight. What we found was a few little rough spots like here where the water had brought up the grain and so you take a little steel wool and you wipe that down and then we found that 
Well, it was a little bit on the splotchy side. So we went ahead and applied another coat of stain. So now we have a very uniform coating of stain all the way through the wood, and that's good. So we're ready to now go to the next step. So we'll just briefly wipe it down with the steel wool again. You notice I'm not showing, I'm not pulling up any fresh wood. This is not near as aggressive as sanding is. And so you do this between steps. Because your brass is going to take a little of this stain, meaning uh, it won't soak in, but it will discolor it a little bit, but the steel wool will quickly take it off. Okay. That's looking pretty good, guys. All right. Now, we have two different things here. Uh, this is a harder finish than the oil. And I'm going to put this on the inside of this cavity to help seal it. But we're going to start with the oil finish, and I've, as usual, put it in a larger tub. And it's best if you just daub this in with a soft piece of flannel or something like that. Old t-shirt material does just fine. And you notice it flows differently than the stain. It has a different feel to it. It has some smell. And this smell is <laughs> interesting. Uh, you remember this smell for an awful long time. All right. Now, we're going to start and put the first of a couple of coatings inside. And the reason we're doing this is to help protect and waterproof all this exposed wood. Because that is the danger of wooden stock so far as their functionality is concerned. They do swell. Okay, we're going to call that good for now. And I did get a little piece of that other finish here, which I'm wiping off the top, as you see. All right. Well, now all that's needed is to have the patience to let this sit here and rest overnight before you do it again. We have now arrived at the point where I have put three applications of our true oil on the stock. And I'm going to steel wool it down a little bit. And I've noticed a small problem. And that is there are pores in the grain. This is a fairly porous walnut. And so we're going to put a little filler on it and see if we can fill some of those before we proceed by mixing a, a very finely divided filler compound in with the next coating of our true oil. Get our usual little tub here. It's not going to take much. And we'll see if we can make a sort of paste. I'm not quite sure if this be the recommended method or not, but this is the method we're going to use. Ideally, a little micro whip would be what we'd be doing, but this is mixing very well. Okay, that's a pretty even suspension, even as we've done it. Okay, that feels good. I don't feel any dry spots along the stop. All right. Well, we're going to hang this up now and let it dry. And after about four or five hours, we'll take a look at it and see how we did. We are rapidly getting to the end of our stock finishing. 
yeah it's starting to look pretty good actually and we put now four coats of true oil on it and what this does it's something like tongue oil in the sense that it does give uh, a hard finish on the surface uh, something like a, a varnish kind of finish except it's a little deeper into the wood so what birch wood Casey has here is a polishing compound and this has an abrasive in it but it's a very mild abrasive it's like one would use in finishing jewelry so what you do is you get a cloth that's saturated like this and then you proceed to polish the stock and if you get some brass you can polish that too it'll work very well Now the stock now has a bit more of a sheen to it. Um, yeah, you can see the light play a little bit better. Uh, these long runs of lighter areas as it turns. Yeah, that did some good. So what we're going to do next is our final step in stock finishing. And that is to actually put a good coat of paste wax on it and as you see this is an old and much used tub of wax here so you put some on your cloth and get your cloth fairly well saturated with it you don't want lumps on the surface but uh, you do want to cover it and take a daub with the fingers here and just proceed to rub it on the stock. Now this is the nearest we can come to waterproofing the stock, uh, is waxing it. That's something that's really not often done, but it's the most effective and inexpensive way I know to make a stock more nearly waterproof than anything else outside of polyurethane. Now polyurethane works pretty well too. Now the more the wax dries, the higher the polish will get. So I'm going to work on this for a while and then give you a look at the finished gun. Well, our stock finishing is complete. Uh, we have waxed it. Uh, now it feels very smooth and slick in the hands of Dave. And we've done all the fitting and polishing on the stock, front and rear. So we're ready for final assembly. We accomplished what we wanted to do, and that is build a serviceable stock for a hunting gun. Now I am not a fine craftsman and do not claim this to be a perfect stock. In fact, uh, the glass bedding here is testimony that it is not. But this is a strong stock. It's one that a person with somewhat average abilities and a little patience can put together. That's a reasonable job. It ain't perfect. But you know what? I bet this gun will hunt. For now, this is Hovey Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Among my prize-winning books are Extreme Muzzleloading, Backyard Deer Hunting, Crossbow Hunting, and Practical Bow Fishing, which are available as soft cover and e-books. I have an eight-book e-book series out for 2013-14, including Building or Restoring Your Own Muzzleloader, which will feature this rifle. When working on these stocks, be very sure that you store them in a safe place so they don't fall off something or get knocked over and broken. Now, rags soaked with grease, stock oils, and solvents can spontaneously combust, so don't wad them up in a bucket somewhere. Dispose of them immediately after use. For more on my books, blogs, and videos, go to my website at www.hovysmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.